Okay, so today's lecture, we are still dealing with principles of mathematical induction. And specifically for now, we want to, to prove that something. So in this case, we, we, we will have a value. It's true for ON. That is the value of n greater than some number. So this number will say k. So this is an integer. So this is where we are going to base our discussion. So how do we do this? Of course, under mathematical induction, we begin with P1. That is for the value of n is equal to 1. And then we prove that it is true. And then we come up with a, a proposition and in this case, we, a proposition will be for any value. So we choose the value, say, k. If this is true, then it should imply that it is also true for other values which are greater than k. In this case, whenever k is bigger, the, whenever, the, whenever the new value of k is bigger than the other value of k. So this is what we are basically going to be dealing with. So looking at this example, we are given the sum of natural numbers. So in this case, Basically, we are talking about odd numbers. So this is 1, 3, 5, up to the nth odd number, which is given by n, 2n minus 1. Now, the sum is it going to be true for all values of n. So, we begin by proposing that it is true for n is equal to 1. So, we are saying, so, we 1 plus 3 plus 5, which are odd numbers, plus some odd number 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. So here, for the left hand side, whenever n is equal to 1, the left hand side is basically equal to the value of n, the value 1 here, which means that our left hand side is basically equal to 1. Now, if we push for the right hand side, so for the right hand side, we are saying n is equal to 1, so meaning that we have in this case 1 squared because our n is, is n squared here and this is going to be 1 by 1 which is just basically 1 so from here we are going to conclude that our left hand side is equal to the right hand side and this is equal to 1 so we are saying this is true for all values of n whenever n is equal to 1 now what if we make another proposition so in this case, we're going to assume that our n is equal to some value in this case, k. So this means that we are going to have something like this. Of course, this is going to be here. So for p is equal to k, this is going to be 1 plus 3, which is basically an odd number, plus 2, where this n, we are going to put k, and then minus 1 which is the last term, which is equal to k squared. Now, this is a very important statement because this is where we are going to base our, our, our argument in proving that pk implies this one. So from here, take note. We are saying, if this is true, then it means that pk plus 1 should also be true. So we are proposing now that Mm, our value for n is going to be equal to k plus 1. So if our value for n is going to be k plus 1, then we are going to have our pk plus 1, which is equal to 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus... Of course, since this is k plus 1, this term will be captured, which is 2k minus 1, and then plus the new term, which is basically which is k plus 1. So the new term will basically be... If we follow the, the initial statement we have, so it's going to be in square bracket 2, where this n will put k plus 1, then minus 1, and then this is going to be equal to, this is going to be equal to, of course, here we have our n squared, in this case our n is equal to k plus 1, this is going to be k plus 1 squared, okay? So if this is the case, then we simplify this one, 
of course, it doesn't have to be equal. This is going to be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus dash dash 2k minus 1 then plus. Now, simplification of this. This is 2k. Then this is going to be 2 minus 1 when you multiply. So it is equal to plus 1. And this is going to be k plus 1 squared. Now, I want you to take note of this. Initially, we had something like this. Of course, this, this end up to there. So the entire thing, whenever k, whenever n is equal to k, is equal to this k squared. So meaning that if we capture the whole thing here, up to some k here, this is going to be equal to k squared. Because this part is basically this part. Okay? So now, then this implies that we have a situation where this whole thing will be k squared plus this part which is k squared is capturing this one plus 2k plus 1 equal to k plus 1 this k squared so now we need to prove that this left hand side is equal to the right hand side so instead of moving with this together what we are going to do, we concentrate on this and verify that the result from the left hand side will be equal to the result on the right hand side. So we have our k squared plus 2k plus 1 when we remove the brackets. Now when we factorize this one, then this is going to be k squared. Our sum is 2k. So it's the same as we have k plus k then plus 1. So so if we factor it by grouping, which means we take this one in group and this one in a group, this is going to be k, then we are going to have k plus 1, plus the common factor here is 1, so it's going to be here, then k plus 1, like that. So this is what we have. Again, we see that k plus 1 is common on both sides, so we factor it out, it will be k plus 1, then if we divide this into the whole thing, then we're going to end with k and plus this into this part is going to give us 1. And if we simplify, say we have k plus 1 multiplied by k plus 1, which is the same as k plus 1 squared. So in this case, we are saying our left hand side has been proven to be equal to k plus 1 squared. Now, this result here, if we compare with the result that we have here on the right hand side, then we are going to say that they are equal. Therefore, we can conclude that uh, this is going to be equal to the right hand side. So, this statement, when we have this one is equal to that one, then this implies that uh, our postulate, whenever our k is given, it implies also for k plus 1. Now, this verifies that for any n greater than or equal to 1, then this statement is true according to the postset which was given. So in this case, the postset we are talking about is basically this statement. So whenever the value of n is greater than 1, then this statement is always true. So the proof is done here. So if you have time, you can go through again. But the most important thing that we are going to remember is we are going to be proving whenever we have a n which is greater than some number that we don't know anything else with anything that is given in terms of an integer this number that we should be comparing it should always be a positive positive integer